Hey all, this is Eric Christensen from meded101.com. Got some really important information uh, for those of you taking the Board Certified Pharmacotherapy Specialist exam or the BCPS exam, uh, which it's most commonly called. Uh, so in the fall of 2024, uh, the content outline is going to change. Uh, we've also got some changes uh, with the uh, continuous testing period uh, being implemented as well. So I'm going to outline uh, some of those important changes and how that might affect how you plan uh, and prepare for your BCPS exam in the fall of 2024. So the big takeaways, uh, just a, a quick quick and dirty summary here for you, and then I'll get into to more specifics. Um, the content outline change is going to have more pharmacotherapy. So in my mind, this is a good thing. Uh, I, I want to be asked about medication-related questions. Um, maybe that's just my personal opinion, but um, that's definitely a good thing. Now, with those changes, are those you know questions that they're adding or their percentage of questions that they're adding, are they going to be more difficult or less difficult? Um, that remains to be seen. Historically, when changes have been made to the content outline, uh, pass rates typically go down. Um, so that's just something that has historically happened, not to say that's necessarily going to happen this time, um, but with those changes, uh, typically uh, pass rates have gone down. The content outline for fall 2024 also has more specifics on some of those pharmacotherapy topic areas. So that's good uh, in, in a general sense there. And again, I've got the whole layout of uh, you know what that content outline looks like. Uh, less statistics in the percentage of questions that is being asked. That is an important thing to recognize as well. Now, most of you are probably thinking about jumping up and being excited about that. Uh, it's still significant. Uh, the percentage of, of questions that you're likely to be asked um, we're talking probably 10 to 12 questions on statistics that you're going to be asked or in that neighborhood. Um, and not necessarily just statistics. It's with regard to, to research and clinical trial design and things of that nature. Um, but generally, in my experience, if you study and prepare for this section, most candidates are going to be ready to go and they're going to get those questions right. Um, they're, they generally, in, in my opinion, haven't been terribly tricky um, with statistics and research and those type of questions. So I strongly encourage you to prepare for that and not blow it off, even though it's a lower percentage. Uh, and I think our study materials have done a really, really nice job of preparing people. Um, we've obviously got some, some feedback on that of um, you know topic areas to include a little bit more on or a little bit less. Um, over the years, we've been doing this for over 10 years now or about 10 years now. Um, so don't blow off statistics. You've got to prepare for it. You've got to know that stuff inside and out. So, you know, your, your p-values, your, you know, absolute redis, risk reduction versus relative risk reduction, um, number needed to treat, number needed to harm, confidence intervals, all, the, all that stuff. Um, you're definitely going to want to pay attention to uh, and prepare for. And again, in our study materials, we've we've laid that out um, pretty well, I think. Uh, so I alluded to the fact that you know typically pass rates do go down uh, slightly, but what's going to happen after the the fall? Um, I can't predict that for sure, uh, but those are are just the trends that I've seen over the years. Uh, with that, we've updated our our study materials uh, for fall 2024 based upon the, the content outline changes, and I've uh, provided the URL there if you want to look them up, or just Google search uh, BCPS study materials, MedEd 101, and you should uh, see the, the different options there. Eligibility requirements, uh, they've stayed consistent, I think, for several years now. Uh, the numbers to remember are three years of pharmacotherapy practice experience, which most pharmacists have. I have never heard of anyone being rejected from taking the exam. Um, with that said, maybe there's a person out there, um, but I've never gotten an email or anything from anybody um, saying that they, they weren't allowed to take it, um, with the exception being if you don't have enough practice experience or you don't have a, a PGY-1 residency. Uh, the window uh, examination, or the exam window, I should say, 
uh, is going to be September 24th through October 15th. Uh, it is important to note that there are registration deadlines um, when it opens and when it closes. Um, so don't hop on September 1st uh, expecting that you're going to uh, take the exam in the fall testing window. Uh, definitely take a peek at this and prepare and plan and make sure you get signed up and registered. And in general, in my experience, the sooner the better um, that you can register. Go ahead and do that. That way you can get um, have better opportunities to get a preferred testing time that might work better with your schedule. So the continuous testing uh, exam, I did want to mention that briefly. Um, so testing appointments will be available. It used to historically just be the fall window and the spring window. So now they're going to open that up and how that's going to affect grading and that type of thing. And pass rates, um, really, I, I really don't know that for sure. Um, but I think uh, it's important. Uh, it is nice for candidates to have that option to take it in, you know, maybe November or December, or maybe when they're a little less busy, uh, depending upon their, their work and life schedule. So the applicant fees, I wanted to point these out um, to take the exam. Uh, it is $600. Uh, retake, which many pharmacists will have to do. I think it's important that you get over that hurdle. Um, 30 to 40% uh, at least sometimes have passed, have, excuse me, have failed this exam. So there is a significant possibility that you will fail the exam. And um, in my mind, at least that, that retake application fee um, is half price. So if you're, you know, considering study materials and things, I've, I've seen candidates spend upwards of 1000 1500 bucks going to different courses and traveling and things like that. Um, my sense is I'd, I'd rather probably take the exam, um, and then not pass and see what I need to prepare and plan for a little bit better. Uh, and then be able to uh, retake that exam and maybe save some of that money on some of the more expensive study materials um, and, you know, have that experience of seeing what the exam feels like um, and maybe, you know, target those areas where I, I need to do a little bit more studying. So that's just my sense on the, you know, taking the exam and then not take and then um, doing the retake if it doesn't go so well. Um, but others, you know, certainly have a, a different experience and pharmacists, you know, we tend to be a little bit type A, uh, where, you know, failing an exam doesn't feel very good. <laughs> um, but I've got to remind you that, you know, the majority of pharmacist jobs do not rely on this, um, to continue working and get your paycheck. Okay. Um, you know, there are some situations where it is being required more and more, um, for various positions and things of that nature. But in general, the job you're working at right now, um, you know, isn't going to uh, require it or you're going to have some time uh, to pass that exam. So it isn't quite as catastrophic uh, as failing the, the NAPLEX. So definitely, um, I, I would encourage you to get over that hurdle because there is a very high fail rate with this exam. Uh, and then recertification is uh, cheaper. That's been my uh, preferred option, um, taking the exam again versus um, doing all the CE uh, and the you know challenges and monitoring and tracking of, of that. Um, I uh, just prepare and, and retake the exam. And then the annual certification maintenance fees, of course, uh, I list them for completeness sake. I uh, wanted to throw in here, these are... Um, Pass rates. Uh, this is from 2023. Uh, I'm doing this video in April of 2024. Uh, we're not going to know uh, the spring pass rates for 2024 until probably June or July uh, in, in that time frame. But historically, uh, BCPS, as you can see on the bottom there, um, pass rates have ranged in that 60 to 70%. Um, it has dipped below that, I think, once or twice below 60%. Um, so again, it's a very, very difficult exam. It's a broad exam um, and, and definitely challenging for candidates. Uh, length of the exam, this has been reduced. It used to be 200, then it dropped to 175, and now we're at 150. Um, when you're in there taking your exam, remember, 25 of these questions aren't scored. 
So if you start out the exam and you're not doing very well, you've got to remember that there are 25 questions in here that aren't scored, okay? So keep your cool, relax. You're going to get some wrong. It's okay. You're not going to know the answer to some of the exam questions. Um, just give yourself a little grace and you know, don't blow the second half of the exam because you feel like the first you know, 10, 20, 30 questions didn't go so well. Most of the questions within the exam are going to be four option multiple choice, so usually just uh, the one answer there. Uh, administration time frame, three hours and 45 minutes. Uh, and then you can take uh, a scheduled break, but it does uh, count against your time there. I believe originally when they had 200 questions, they did have um, uh, kind of a scheduled break for you after the first 100 questions. But since they've reduced the length of the exam, they've uh, since taken that away. Uh, BCBS exam content outline. So I definitely wanted to get through this. Uh, so here's uh, that pharmacotherapy section, uh, patient care specialty areas where they designate specific areas. They didn't do this before. Um, so I think this is a, a nice addition. So here you can see, you know, five of the big hitters. Uh, definitely uh, focus on them. ID, cardiology, nephrology, pain management, and endocrinology. Uh, obviously important topic areas there. Here's the 1B section. Uh, again, numerous different topic areas there. Some of these are pretty vague, uh, where there's definitely a lot of things that could be covered in here. Um, so again, kind of honing in on that that studying and, and wit, what and where to study. Um, you know, I think we've done a nice job with our study materials to uh, not overwhelm, but give you some good completeness and give you some great background within each of these sections. And again, uh, we've retooled uh, those areas for the fall 2024 exam um, just to match this content outline. And then the third area, a little less, uh, 9%, you know, oncology, nutrition, hospice, pediatrics, you know, kind of getting a little bit more into to specialized areas there um, that uh, may not appear quite as much. So, and then coupled with that original 36% on those topic areas, I mean, I really just lump these two together. So thinking about pharmacodynamics, pharmacokinetics, you know, they could ask you pharmacokinetic things, you know, in relation to uh, infectious disease or cardiology. So with this section, I, I lump the 36 plus the 36. So 72% of the exam, in my opinion, is more so based on, you know, therapeutics, uh, pharmacology, uh, pharmacotherapy, guidelines, um, goals of, of treatment, things of, of that nature. So that's really um, where to spend kind of the, the bulk of your time, um, but definitely don't sleep on some of the regulatory and statistics issues either. Uh, so again, here's just kind of kind of more of that. Um, you know, some of this is hard to kind of quantify and, and study and prepare for, um, but certainly we've uh, looked at this and, and done the best we can uh, in some of our, our study materials. And then again, you know, more things about pharmacotherapy, you know, adverse drug reactions, drug interactions, medication adherence. Um, one thing I always tell um, candidates, this gets a little bit overwhelming to kind of read, you know, all these, you know, terms and therapeutic endpoints and, you know, it, it just gets complicated. So um, one of the big things I tell people to focus on when they're looking at the pharmacotherapy section is knowing and understanding why you would choose a drug and why you wouldn't choose a drug. So you wouldn't choose a drug maybe based upon creatinine clearance or renal function. So metformin, great example there. If their kidney function is too poor, you're not going to use metformin. Why you would use a drug. Okay, this patient is morbidly obese. Maybe we would want to utilize a GLP-1 agonist to manage their diabetes, which is going to help their weight loss as well. So again, thinking about, you know, drug interactions, adverse drug uh, events uh, in relation to uh, the clinical situation you're present, presented with. So again, simplifying it as, as maximally as I can, um, understand why you would select a drug and why you wouldn't select a drug. All right, and then we have kind of the last section. So this is the remaining 28%. 
um, again, 28%, that's a big number. Um, you're, you're talking about in the neighborhood of 40 questions out of that 150 uh, that's within this section. So that can definitely make or break your exam. You need to prepare for this section. You need to understand some of the you know, public health and regulatory things, uh, as well as, of course, some of the, the statistics things as, as well. Uh, and so here's that evidence-based practice. So you can expect that there's going to be probably in the neighborhood of uh, 10 questions on statistics. Definitely something I wouldn't blow off. Um, but in my opinion, definitely going to be um, emphasized less compared to previous years with the, the BCPS exam. And again, our statistics uh, study guide PDF, I think, does an excellent job. We've also got uh, some videos as well, or a video on uh, statistics that helps break down some of the most important things that you should definitely know and prepare for. And kind of summing uh, up, we've also got uh, 8% in practice management, so that's some of the informatics, pharmacoeconomics, emergency preparedness. Uh, so that's kind of some of the more broad um, you know, systems, healthcare-based concepts um, in uh, determining which medications are most appropriate to use and select uh, and things of that nature. Uh, examination scoring, I did want to mention it. Um, it's a uh, score that ranges from 200 to 800, but it's a scaled score. So, you know, what exactly that means, how many questions exactly do you need to get right, you know, keep in mind that there's 25 questions that aren't scored um, out of those 150. So it's really, really difficult to tell a candidate, you know, how many they need to get right. You know, is that 100? Is that 120? Is it 96? Is it 90? Um, that's a very, very difficult thing uh, to predict. Uh, in our practice exams, uh, in my experience, simply from anecdotal information, from hearing back from candidates, uh, I think if you get uh, in the neighborhood of 80% uh, correct or better within our practice exams, I think that's a good target. Um, folks that have gotten that 80% or higher have historically uh, performed a, a little bit better. Again, don't have any hard data on that, um, but that's just kind of my experience in the few candidates that we've kind of surveyed and asked. You know, how you did on the, the MedEd 101 practice exams, uh, and then comparing that. So I, I would say 80% is probably a, a good target for you if you've um, achieved that on some of our practice content. Hopefully that's going to set you up for some success uh, in the BCPS exam. And then score reporting. Um, this has been one of my biggest beefs, and I know a lot of beefs uh, of uh, other folks as well, uh, that you've got to wait so long uh, to get your exam results back. So when you take the exam, my advice is to jot down target areas where you need to study. Uh, anticipate that you did not pass the first uh, the exam the first time. Uh, after the exam, jot down some notes of areas that you need to do better on, that you need to study more. Uh, and then put those notes away in a safe spot and, uh, you know, patiently wait for your exam results. When you get the results, hopefully you've passed and uh, it'll be a day of, of celebration for sure. Uh, if you haven't, you've already got a place to start, um, things to, to lean on as far as preparing for the, the next time. So again, stay patient with getting those results. Uh, definitely important to take an assessment of areas that you felt you did good on and felt you did poorly on. And again, target those areas where you uh, didn't do so well and could use a little bit more time and, and preparation, and then get your results back and uh, kind of adapt your study plan from there for taking it for your next go-around. Uh, if you're looking for links uh, to our content, you can find um, all of our study materials and everything we have at meded101.com slash store. Uh, if you've got any uh, you know comments, questions, suggestions, um, Go ahead and reach out to me, mededucation101 at gmail.com. And I'll also put uh, links in the uh, comments section as well for the study materials uh, and for uh, any other important information. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you, this helps you uh, prepare and plan for your BCPS exam in fall 2024 and beyond. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.